This is Julie Pearson Little Thunder with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University Library. Today is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, and I'm talking with Janice Edmiston Williams and Caesar Williams about their experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic in Oklahoma. This project is supported through the Institute for Museum and Library Services American Rescue Plan grant fund. Caesar, you're a Ponca tribal member. You attended Chilaco Indian Agricultural School post high school, and you worked for the Tulsa World as a printer until you retired. You have many duties as an elder, deeply immersed in Ponca traditions, and ceremonial duties at the Osage Ilonshka dances as well. Janice, you're Sac and Fox and Choctaw and have your master's degree in social anthropology. You've been a professional fundraiser and grant writer for over 30 years, and you're also a longtime board member for a nonprofit organization that serves the Tulsa urban native population. I chose both of you, hoping to get a sense of how you were personally impacted by the pandemic, as well as how you saw the community impacts of the pandemic play out. Well, starting with you, Caesar, what are your memories of the pandemic first setting in? Well, when I first heard about it, you know, it was like anything. I didn't pay that much attention to it. And as the time went on, I listened to the news. And as I continued watching, you know, it just started getting worse. And it started uh, uh, to a degree of where, how it impacted me later on didn't really, uh, still didn't pay that much attention to it because we, you know, had other little issues in the past and and I always thought, well, this, this will pass over and that will all be okay. But as it, as you start reading the numbers on the, uh, the deaths that were occurring of that, uh, pandemic was, was uh, starting to, I wouldn't say, I, I didn't get really, really concerned to a degree because like anything, like I said, it, it uh, waited a couple of weeks and it will eventually pass. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, it just seemed to get worse. And as the weeks went by, it got worse. And for myself, when I heard that it was a uh, an issue with people that had a, a, some kind of illness with them, like diabetes and heart conditions, and and still, I, mean, I didn't pay that much attention to it because uh, I was not impacted with those diseases as of yet. So, so it still, uh, as it went along, it, it just uh, didn't. I didn't really uh, uh, think too much about it until it started getting worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Janice, how about you? What are your first memories and maybe even talking a bit about national coverage and state coverage? And you know, it's, it's nice Caesar spoke first because it gave me a chance to reflect. I didn't really learn much about it until uh, around March. I had planned a trip with another friend to meet in Texas. Um, the person we were visiting is a nurse and she had emailed and said, I'm so thrilled I got my money back. I was planning on going to China. And so that gave me a little bit of awareness. And then the more we went back and forth, we just made a decision we're not gonna, we're not gonna meet. Mm -hmm. I was working on a project for an organization here in town and here in Tulsa and then Next thing I knew, they were talking about, we're gonna do a test to see how people are working. Can we work remotely? Well, that was, I think, on March the 19th and March the 20th, the uh, US shut down. And at that time they laid me off and, <laughs> but I still didn't really grasp everything. And like Caesar, you know, I followed the news. But since you asked about the state and federal, the federal, I was extremely, uh, distrusting when you have a person telling you to drink bleach, bleach 
that you get a uh, confusion as to what the process to take care of yourself, that changed repeatedly. And, you know, I'm very patient. I understand that people did not know what we were doing. So, but you do not tell people to drink bleach. You don't go out and uh, encourage people to t uh, take untested uh, medications. So that bothered me. And so, you know, that heightened my fears. And I was very, very fearful, but cautious. Uh, on the state level, I was extremely disappointed. Our governor at the time uh, made a decision that we didn't have a problem. He allowed the president to come in during a time when our uh, county, city county health director said, no, this is not the right time. It increased the spread. I think it also polarized people. You either uh, wear a mask or don't mask, but it polarized people it, rather than helping us bring together at the state level, the the governor also at one time decided that he wasn't going to release any more reports from the CDC. So we were kind of lost. And and my belief is that he was misreporting because I would I got every day uh, I had an Excel form that said how many people uh, in Tulsa County had COVID, how many were hospitalized, and I you know, just ran it every day and looked at the numbers and it was continually increasing where our governor was denying that there was any increase whatsoever. As a matter of fact, supposedly we were one of the best states, which was not accurate by any means. I really do appreciate our count, city county health department and our mayor for doing what they did. And on the state level, I want to jump back to something like with IHS, Indian Health Service, because they take care of the the region, which includes Oklahoma, they did a phenomenal job. They made sure Indian people and tribes that included uh, urban Indians and rural Indians, they made sure that there was vaccine getting out, that um, they were helping everyone medically, but also financially. So mm -hmm. I was pleased at the, at the tribal level. And the best that our city could do with the limited resources that it had. Caesar, did you want to add anything to the state or federal coverage or talk about how maybe um, Ponca Nation responded um, or, or IHS in your view? Well, I don't... <laughs> You're away from I kind of kinda <laughs> got tickled over your stuff which said you went through the state and the uh, as a I looked at it as uh, the reports that uh, Janice just mentioned about the governor and all this, it, it was a, uh, myself, I could not believe mm -hmm. what was happening, even our, say, state leader per se, that were in charge or everything, you know, it was, uh, it was kind of like a, I don't know if I'm come, I'm gonna come from a, a native point of view of uh, listening to our state leaders, just like the Janice was saying. You know, it was a uh, how can these guys not believe what's mm -hmm. happening? How can they uh, uh, not listen to this, uh, as a national on a national level and uh, the uh, uh, reports that were putting, being put out on and how many people were being uh, 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 dying from this disease. And and going back to even our, our, uh, uh, our native uh, population, you know, I myself, within my own family, has, uh, has uh, lost, I think that count was like 19. Well, and that was because of, uh, of the, well, the disease comorbidity yeah um, and and COVID. even a family a whole family you know got uh uh pretty near wiped out uh, uh i know of in our own the tribal mm -hmm. the punkas uh in their their uh their tribe of uh, uh one a nephew mm -hmm. the only one that's left his brothers sisters and and I still look at it as a, as at that time, being cautious, 
and listening to what little uh, uh, health uh, requirements that was required was was not that big of a deal, mm -hmm. like wearing a mask, you know, social and, uh, and that social distancing, and uh, uh, the just just the listening to the the rhetoric that was that's happening in the news mm -hmm. was I could not believe the the people that were losing loved ones and and uh, through this uh, pandemic that's going mm -hmm. and what a big fuss that they made out of it of wearing a mask and even as we got our the uh, uh, necessary shots finally that come on scene and still people you know, reluctantly not taking the, the injections, you know, and not uh, believing that uh, that this uh, serum, uh, the, the vaccine was working. But the, I mean, I was just, you know, flabbergasted, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just being, and I stayed, most, I'm a retired person, I stayed home and I, I ventured out, but still, you know, uh, my wife, Janice, she made masks oh, and yeah. we, and we, uh, we wore them, and and uh, so we took cautions. Yeah, yeah. And even even uh, my uh, positions I have with uh, my, uh, which you mentioned earlier about uh, being a native and and being amongst our our people. The uh, I was worried about going to these uh, uh, events that was that was uh, going to take place, and I even uh, at one point. The, uh, the event that I was going to uh, attend, you know, I made a point that I was not going to, if I was a carrier, I didn't want to be a person that's going to be next to another person and then to spread it, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, vice versa, you know. So I had a family and I didn't want to come back and among my little family here in Tulsa and if I was a carrier and it didn't affect me, well then I didn't want to be the one to to uh, pass it on to a family member. Mm -hmm. So that that point, I was I started getting more, uh, I guess you say, involved in uh, talking to my little family about it here in Tulsa because I have a my little, little family here. Whole all together, we're, there's like 20, 24 of us here. And we get together, and so we. I didn't. I didn't want to to uh, have even events, mm -hmm. but we generally have for our little family gatherings here. Mm -hmm. So it impacted me to a point where I felt bad about it, but still, I felt a uh, 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 good about of uh, listening to the uh, all the news and the uh, uh, health issues that people had, and and it just. Uh, it was to me. It's devastating. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think I'd ever witness uh, a history making in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it just um, it's something that I hope I never witness another one. Mm -hmm. And these things are popping up one after another. You know, the these uh, issues, mm -hmm. and so it made me more aware of uh, of being around other people. And so when I do go around other people, I keep my distance. Mm -hmm. And and we're right now we're feel fairly, you know, uh, safe to be around people. Mm -hmm. And even not now not wearing a mask, you know. So it's a uh, it's uh, the CDC what they recommend, but we try to you know mm -hmm. abide by it and follow the rules. Mm -hmm. this Oh, I'm sorry, How this just makes me think about so many instances, um, like masks. I forgot all about sewing. Yes. You know, I took them to the hospital. I took them to people. And I, your friend. And Dan friends. Anyone. That's right, friends. I was learning how to make them, but I thought one thing was interesting. Our, our postal person, you know, she drove, and you drove up, and you know how you wiped all your mail down and everything, and you know, I kind of yelled at her from six feet. I said, where's your mask? And she said, we're required to have them, but they haven't given us any. And nobody could get masks anywhere. And so I made masks for her to, you know, I could make eight to give out to the um, postal workers because we couldn't go anywhere. 
And unfortunately, I had cotton material I could sew, I, uh, and I had to order elastic, and I was lucky to get that because that went really, really quick. Uh, but the fact that I, everybody that I knew sewed were sewing masks, trying to get things out, trying to help each other. You know, my next door neighbors, um, he has an issue, and same thing, I yell, are you guys okay, you got masks? And they're like, well, no, and I said, okay, let me give you some, you know, so I'd make them. But that's just, um, I think a small thing that, um, you know, I was able to do. But one thing I did learn, I did a lot of online shopping, <laughs> groceries and everything, and I have a lot of ill-fitting clothes <laughs> because of that. it says, you know, size small, and it turns out to be too big or too small. So anyway, that I did do, I've learned how to do a lot of online shopping for groceries and clothes. <laughs> Sorry, that was it. <laughs> how about... Janice, the way that friends maybe and family, how you maintain communication? Well, on um, friends, a lot of texting and then um, calling and checking. Um, we have a, I have a sister in law here in town and she, you know, I would check on her because she's in her 80s. So those were phone calls. Uh, occasionally, you know, maybe sit outside and visit but usually with mask and very uh, having a lot of precautions um, family of course and I think now I think back whenever we visit if anybody touched anything you know we're all like not only sanitizing our hands but sanitizing, every, sanitizing everything they touched um, we didn't have anyone in the house you know Caesar's uh, brother and sister would come to Tulsa for different things and it's like they can't spend the night, you know. And that was that was really hard. Mm -hmm. I think I lost a lot of social interactions. I lost a lot of social graces, and I to this day I feel that I lost my network because I used to have a lot of friends, and you could at least drop by and see them. And it's just a slow regain because we've only started coming out uh, and seeing more people as about March of 2022. So. Caesar, you mentioned um, being, you know, being aware and being careful and making decisions about when you went to different, if you were going to go to some doings or events. And at some point, then also, I know, um, you know, uh, people were getting together and making decisions whether events would go forward, like Imoshka, like, mm -hmm. you know, your traditional dances. Um, up there at White Eagle. So, how was that? How was that playing out? Were you were you involved in some of those conversations, or you were just how were you well, being really, kept I, current? No, I you know I wasn't uh, just like her. I'm I'm uh, I always <laughs> I refer to myself as being computer illiterate. <laughs> you know, because I, I even though I like the technology, the I find out where the the events were taking place, and I try to make a decision to attend them, and and it was through like she has a Facebook, and I go with this year because most of that information is put on that Facebook, mm -hmm. so she allowed me to use her Facebook to find out information, and mm -hmm. and so that's where I was finding my information from, and when the, we finally got our shots, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, I think four of them now, well, I felt it was this, this, this year that I felt comfortable mm -hmm. getting out among uh, uh, people, mm -hmm. okay? And, and just like I said, I take part in, uh, I enjoy the native ceremonies that, that uh, we attend and I uh, started uh, just here, I think uh, in, it was in November, my first encounter with uh, going to a ceremonial gathering, oh, yeah. and which I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when I got, when I did get to the event, it it was still a little, you know, hesitant, mm -hmm. but the, the people supposedly, uh, we had, to hope for that they had their 
there are shots, you know, the, the injections of the, the Moderna and those other two they had. And, but still being cautious, you know, the, instead of shaking hands like you normally do, it's like you get an elbow bump, you know. So it was just, uh, and they, they respected that too. And the, uh, the event that I went to, there was, <laughs> was a non-ending mm -hmm. a gathering. These were uh, a group that has uh, has uh, participated in, in, I'm gonna talk about my tribe, the Punkas. Okay, they, they uh, years ago, they, they established uh, our ceremonial dances that we had up there up north in uh, Nebraska and in uh, Dakota area. But when we got moved down here to Oklahoma, well, then they got kind of left and this, they got revived and non Indians was, I don't know, they, they were, I think I heard them mention being hobbyists. And so they got interested in our, our, our dance. And they got approved by a Ponca. But they got approved by a Ponca to Yes, to they had to. Those. In order to get that, they just didn't grab it. They had to come as like anything else. You, you approach the, the, uh, the leaders of the organization and, and they, they were allowed to, to take, take the dance. And so these were all non-Indians in, in, out of Oklahoma in a different state. And, and I wasn't participating in anything here at home. They're still having dances, okay, here in Oklahoma, but the still the, the uh, pandemic was still around just like it is still here now, okay. I was, I was a little bit cautious of going to, to my, even my own back home, because like I said, they, they, I got information and from, uh, who was passing away in the family. So, so I never, I didn't want to, like I said, like I said before, I didn't want to go someplace and then where it was prevalent, more prevalent, I thought, and people were taking uh, precautions like they should. Well, then I wanted to protect my little family here in Tulsa. But getting back to outside, going to these places, uh, uh, to this ceremonial dance, I enjoyed it. And it's the first time I took part in it. And they come back here in uh, Oklahoma, where my own tribe had their their dance two years before that, when it was uh, uh, where they canceled it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this time while they started having the uh, ceremonial dances, and so this year was the first year I was amongst my own people, mm -hmm. uh, participating and felt comfortable, you know, enjoying the uh, the ceremonial dance that I attend. And be and participated in, mm -hmm. and so it just uh, so this year is the first time that I'm I'm more mm -hmm. uh, uh, cautious and abuse, uh, you know, uh, good enough to be around mm -hmm. that was, was taking place mm -hmm. that, that happening this year. So mm -hmm. I'm attending more more ceremonial dances, and I probably intend the powwow that they're going to be having. Mm -hmm. So right now it's at a kind of a really a. Uh, a nice uh, place in our life where we're going to be back into the spotlight, so to speak. Right, right. Um, can I throw something in there? You're talking about ceremonies. Some of the things that were interrupted is that people couldn't have any ceremonials for funerals. I was going to say that was a loss yeah. of a specific kind. Yeah, and Facebook did help in a way because we had a nephew sing songs for those who had passed and you know mm -hmm. he did that on Facebook which we appreciated mm -hmm. um, the family the Williams family has two Kyoto meetings every year uh, spring and fall in March of 2020 uh, excuse me March yeah 2020 it was about ready to come up so there's a lot of discussion should we go forward should we stop so anyway we haven't had a fam and it's family services. We haven't had a family service since March of 2020. Mm -hmm. And some are still, and it's understandable, should we still move forward? Because you're touching things that people have touched you. You know, you're drinking out of the same cup. So mm -hmm. that has not yet been restored. 
but the funerals we did go through Zoom. We saw some funerals uh, via Zoom. We, more than we wanted, really. We saw a wedding through Zoom, <laughs> but uh, family events like that, markers. We just did the best we could, and thank goodness for technology and the patience of our family members because it's not easy to be holding a little camera well, you know, an hour or so long. And then the last Zoom we did was in September of 2021 when uh, a nephew had COVID and passed. So, yeah, very quickly too. So. Well, how about access to PPE, Janice? I'll start with Personal you. Personal protective um, who, equipment? Who provided where did you get your PPE besides banking? You made some. Okay. <laughs> uh, personal pr uh, provider equipment. I really we just made it. We we were I made masks and they were cotton and double layered and you could stick another layer in there. Um, I just made the masks and enough for us to have for like two weeks out. We weren't going anywhere, <laughs> so it really it wasn't an issue. I did order those face shields because. Um, they kept saying, add layers, add layers, but we'd never used them. And uh, just recently, I ordered those N95, and I, oh, because they were saying things were escalating with the, uh, that new variant. And what I found is I don't really like wearing them because I guess little fibers get in my nose, and so it's either take them off and rub, and pardon me, and the other personal protective equipment is we have hand sanitizer <laughs> in the house, in the car, in my purse, and like a few times that I should, like we were at a uh, at the Osage Elanchka. This was when we had that break in June where it's like, okay, things are good. But I still, if I shook hands and gave somebody some money, I added a handy, you know, one of those uh, disposable wipes with it so they could clean their hands immediately. <laughs> nice touch. Um, so how about other kinds of hardships? I don't know, uh, say in terms of work or, you know, you were not completely retired, Caesar was retired, um, economic hardships, just how did the pandemic impact you work-wise? Well, I immediately lost the project that I had and I did miss that because you know everybody enjoys having extra money and it was it was going to end maybe in September October so all was fine was there um, we virtually met with our financial advisor and said you know kind of work things out okay what's going to happen in the next year or so uh, the fact that the government provided the stimulus that was phenomenal for us, and I know for other people. Uh, the tribes also helped. I know the Pumpas, and uh, my sister is on the Sac and Fox Rolls. They assisted her. The Choctaws assisted me. Um, what I didn't know at the time, <clears throat> pardon me, I could have applied to the Choctaws for like $1,000 since I lost my job, but since I'd already gotten Choctaw COVID money, I didn't think it was right, mm -hmm. but they told me, you should do that next time. And then the other thing that they did, which was has been extremely helpful, especially now because while we are not post-pandemic, we are um, on a different level of the bell curve. So now we've got inflation, um, shortages for food, et cetera. The Choctaws, if you're, I think it's 55 or you're an elder, um, they will give you $200 a month for food. Mm -hmm. And that has been a phenomenal help. We weren't destitute, um, but because of inflation, we've been able to maintain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I can still buy this brand. So that has been, that's the piece that's changed. If I were to go back to work, I don't know if I would want to go back to an office yet. Uh, I don't know. And some of it is because some employers don't make vaccination mandatory and we of course you never know who's a carrier but you also don't want to um, and that includes me you also don't want to be responsible for making somebody ill mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're the the positives about the vaccine is you're less likely to be hospitalized, which I've seen repeatedly. Mm -hmm. But there are still people that are getting ill and going to the hospital and uh, being cared for. So these are, you know, during these long periods of basically social isolation, how did you handle it? <laughs> it was really tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, at the height of it all, you know, you get cabin fever, yeah, you know, yeah. get tired of walking around the house. I think you get tired of watching TV, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, uh, the human mind, they want to get out and and just want to drive. And that's what we used yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. We'd get out as a baby. I said, it's time to go check out <laughs> Tulsa. So we'd go, and it, it was uh, it was rewarding because when we get out, and since I retired and I worked for downtown, yeah, you know, I didn't realize how much Tulsa has grown. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've been I've been retired for probably going, uh, but it's almost uh, fifteen years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the this pandemic when it hit, and we stayed home for a month or two. I mean, of course, everybody still had to work. There were still people out and and doing what they had to do, you know. But when I'd get out, I'd go downtown and a new building would be, I said, wow, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it was just, uh, but not only in Tulsa, but it was different parts of town because we, we went from one end of Tulsa. <laughs> we did. <laughs> off the main streets and you go all the time, but with some of the streets, you know, you never get on anyway. So I'd say, let's take off on this one street. I had never been mm -hmm. past this, it's like going out out uh, east of town here. Well, there was one road, we never go going, we went on this one road. And it was really a nice drive mm -hmm. because it took us in a little area where there, it's got little valleys and you come up out of there and then here we're on a broken arrow uh, turnpike over here, get on there. So it just kind of uh, uh, impacted me to a point where we're just getting out, driving around mm -hmm. and sightseeing and, and seeing the rest of the city. Uh, mm -hmm. How uh, it has uh, grown and, and to different parts of down here in Bigsby, you know, how much a uh, residential yes. area, same way with Glen Cove, how much of a residential area has popped up. And I was just, you know, mm -hmm. it was it was nice. I mean, for that point, you know, now I'd get satisfied for about almost an hour to two hours <laughs> of driving and around Tulsa, then coming back, then I was satisfied for another two weeks or so. So it was uh, uh, that. It didn't impact me as much as with her because she's more social than I am. I'm a, after I retired, well, that's, that was my, my main goal, which is I can enjoy being home. I can just uh, do what I want to do, go where I want. And, and, but the far just where it made you say stay in because of uh, uh, you don't have to get out don't go out, you know, because of, it's still there, mm -hmm. which is like now it's yeah. still, it's still variants are still hanging around, but mm -hmm. we feel safe enough to a point right now, I do anyway, to that, uh, that they're being well vaccinated mm -hmm. and hopefully, you know, this will subside like mm -hmm. all the rest of the, 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 the pandemics that that I have never experienced before, but this is the first time. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, matter of fact, it's the first time there's several history making mm -hmm. things happen this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just uh, hope that everybody still stays vigilant, mm -hmm. you know, to a point where listen to the your caregiver, your CDC, wherever you might, you know, I know there's different opinions after with everything so but uh, like I said I have uh, the hope how can I say the uh, the loved ones that has been not only say amongst the native people it's all mm -hmm. all walks and different ethnicities have experienced and it, it's a really a devastating time in this last uh, three three years you know so uh, just right now, I'm enjoying what little bit of a uh, 
leisure time of being sociable right now. So, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> more so than he ever had. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that was that. that that was great. Yeah, those those driving trips were were a great idea. And Janice, I know you and I. I, I know you did a lot of introspection during yes. this time yeah. and um, you know reevaluation kind of mm-hmm. what are, what are some of the thoughts that went through your mind? Well, I'm going to throw something in on the driving. We went and looked at some of the murals in Tulsa. You can Google top ten murals in Tulsa. Beautiful murals and work. Um, I what I did was try and do things that I had put off to the side. And one of them was I did three months of scanning pictures that from my my mother's, from mine. And finally, when I hit the World War I pictures, I was like, I can't do this anymore. But in the process of looking at those, I was able to reconnect with some people. I had, excuse me, I had uh, pictures of people from a long time ago, and so I found them. And one of them was a cousin. I had her father's uh, baby picture. It was a brown sepia tone that was over 100 years old. And it took me a year to find her, but one of those was made me stop and think, you know, I need to take the time and get things back to people that are meaningful. So I know that sounds kind of odd, but when, if somebody always says, oh, I remember your mom, which, you know, very few people do because, uh, you know, they're gone. It's not, uh, I want to be, wanted to be sure that if somebody, if I had something of somebody's, whether it be a picture or something that their parent gave me, I wanted to give back to them. And so that, uh, that was definitely one thing. And I think part of it is, how can I be a better person? You know, what, have, because all of us were really looking at the possibility of passing. Mm-hmm. You know, we never knew when we were going to be exposed to COVID. We didn't know how our bodies would react. And hopefully, I do believe that I'm a patient person, but I became, I think, a much patient and kinder person because as we drove around, people were nervous. And they had no problems yelling at you in a store or anything like that. And I try to remember it's, you know, we're all on edge. It's not necessarily who they are. They are, may not be this person that they're showing at this moment. But um, I think the thing for me was retouching family and history and, um, and just recognizing how this pandemic made us all the same again Mm -hmm. except in resources you know i'm really we're very very fortunate we live in a country that got that got that vaccine Mm -hmm. and moved to vaccinate people because there's still people around the world that aren't vaccinated and i i just feel for them because they have to be frightened Mm -hmm. because i was i i mean i i have (laughs) I have no shame in saying I was scared. And I had a sister-in-law, her husband was kind of like me, very scared. And she made a comment, she said, because she would go out more, and she said, are you afraid of dying? And I, you know, it, it was just a comment. And when I was listening to her, and I didn't say anything, but my thought was, I think he's afraid of losing you. And that's how I felt about Caesar when he'd go out, because he'd do things. Uh, nothing wild, but any contact with another human would, for me, would elevated me. And that was, my fear was that I would lose him. I wasn't focused in on, oh, I'm going to get sick, I'm going to, you know, not be able to breathe. But I think that was, for me, the big thing. I the, Just the thought of losing a family member was distressing. So, Caesar, what are some of the what are some of the impacts that you think or maybe that you're even seeing play out a little bit now? Um, and I know you haven't been to many doings yet, but just um, 
just looking around you, maybe in the, your community of friends and, and immediate family, what, are, what have been some of the impacts of this pandemic for others, do you think? You've talked well about how it's impacted you personally, but what are you seeing in terms of your extended family or the larger community? Well, right now, I hope to, just like I said earlier, I hope to be more, uh, get, hopefully get back to normal, what we used to do, mm -hmm. okay? And every every time we have a, even a death in the family, we was able to go back and be with the family. And it's not only my, my, my immediate family, but like I said, I have a big family, mm -hmm. okay? And we always, uh, uh, we were taught by our folks, you know, that to respect, you know, the, each other, and also the relationship that we, we we have with our family. And so when when uh, uh, this started taking place, and it was uh, the pandemic was mostly uh, attributed to elderly people, and and which I was in that group, is that. Uh, my generation, okay, my generation, everybody that I grew up with, you know, they, there were natural causes at that time while we was able to go back and be with the family and, and uh, just to share our, or maybe a little bit that we knew of the person and because that's what people like to hear, you know, and they want to, they, they don't know that uh, the, the relationship that was made when we were growing up, okay, and, and with me, it kind of—I don't know—I guess you might say—I kind of look back at my generation. Is what now when I get up and, and be able to talk to somebody, I speak of my generation. And they say that it's gradually disappearing, and this this uh, pandemic—it seemed like it took more toll on it that that uh, uh, that when I look back even at my like I said my own family here there was like I said there was 19 of us and I was kind of count by by our, our or each one of my dad my uncles my aunts the kids that mm -hmm. they had and and I go and see how many's left you know in, in that in that family and and it made me more so of a uh, uh, saying, I can't, I can't do nothing for them, but just to be with them. Mm -hmm. And so now at this point where, where we were vaccinated and we're able to at least, you know, be back to our, our old little old ways that we used to enjoy, even though we didn't see each other for, you know, over a year and, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, ceremonies that we have that we used to go back to well you know we don't we haven't done that in the last uh, three three years mm -hmm. I, I always count that's four years since i've been back around my people mm -hmm. and but now we're looking forward to just like this year is the first year that i'm gonna be able to to uh, enjoy the gathering of our our ceremonial dances that we have that we all participate in and like with Janice, she, she likes to go to, to the, uh, the uh, second foxes mm -hmm. and, and enjoys the, the uh, friendships that she, has, uh, she knows about. And, and as like I said, she does more study on, on uh, this uh, technology of finding out. And they, and they kind of re rely on her to come up with some information on their, on that side. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of happy occasion right now you know it's kind of like uh, that's what I'm looking forward to it's, it's just getting back just this year you know to a point where we've been to reviving them mm -hmm. and uh, just like I said the uh, you know what we have left in our native uh, society the ceremonies that we have and we were we grew up in it and the uh, uh, what our, our folks have left us you know, they left us with a responsibility to carry it on, but but the the event that has taken place, it has dempened it mm -hmm. in, to a degree. Mm 
mm-hmm. where we, we accept the, the uh, elders that had been lost and that were probably uh, were the leaders in their, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to find them, them people again. But they're, we can't go on if we don't gather. Mm-hmm. So this this is a happy occasion, I would say, this year where we're going to go back and uh, and uh, and uh, just get together again, just like a like I come from a big family. Okay, my uh, my the, the Williams family, I, I, I'll say, and and what's on my dad's side and on my mother's side, what it was called the Gibbswaters family. Okay, now they're having during the Memorial Day they have a, a gathering down there, mm-hmm. and so I'm I'm planning on you know attending that. I haven't been there in like say like say the last four years, mm-hmm. and so I'm looking forward to a, a nice uh, a few months that's ahead of us, mm-hmm. and and uh, that uh, hopefully all this uh, will all go away. You know, mm-hmm. it's just something where. But we will live the ones that are still here. Well, we have to try to mm. make those that that far, you know, mm-hmm. build it up. Yeah, right, right. Um, I know Caesar's been saying four years, but just for a point of clarification, is we lost a nephew uh, about five years ago, and we were laying out for the year, so we didn't go back, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, Actually, we were looking forward to to dancing again, um, participating in things, and then COVID hit. And then COVID hit. And then, um, and then we thought we were going to be able to go out, and then we got exposed, and so we didn't go back last year. A lot of- <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, that, that, that was something I was ready to go out you, last the year. The car was packed, yeah. and we just stopped to get a yeah, COVID yeah. test. Camping equipment, oh, you know. Gosh. Put it all in the car. I had that thing ready to go. We was going an extra day, I think. Yeah. And we had that she about they would call us in to have a, a test. Yeah, test. to to in the We went down to a clinic yeah, and had our test. Uh-huh. Yeah, and and <laughs> she, they come back with after they got the test. Janice was driving, I was sitting on we the side. We were two different cars. Yeah. And uh that lady come back, she's Kept her distance and, uh, and, and, and outside. And that didn't, didn't look good. I was looking at it. She said, I'm sorry. And she also she gave us news that you tested positive. She said, You're a little bit positive. And we were just like, I said, I told her, I said, Just her. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if it was a her, you know, but that included them. But I was, you know, was going to still go home. But still, she said, no, nope, she's the both of you. So, yeah. so, oh, so we were ready, all ready to head back for the. At that time, it was kind of down, and we had our shots and everything. So, then, we, but then still, it was there. Yeah. And I don't know what event we went to where we we got the. Uh, it was me. It, it, it was. I I went to a meeting that was oh, that God. they'd already you know the air was scrubbed. Um, the COVID infection person said, you know, it's okay. You're all right, and then um, it ended up that someone got sick during it, and so I quarantined away from Caesar during that time. And well, when they test, they said you need to come down and get tested. I said I need to bring my husband because we live together. So anyway, long story made short, I quarantined. We thought we were okay, and then when we went back for the second, um, he tested negative the first time. I, I, I can't remember. I think we both tested negative, but anyway, uh, it meant that we couldn't go. And yeah. you know, a friend of ours who's a doctor at John Hopkins, and so I said, "Well, they said we have a little bit of COVID." He didn't say anything other than he laughed. He said, "A little bit of COVID," and I guess it's you know that old jo- joke: you can't be a little bit pregnant. You're either <laughs> pregnant or not pregnant. I think he was kind of thinking along those lines. But we stayed home, and back then you. You, uh, you had to quarantine for ten days, mm-hmm. which we did, and um, everything came out fine. But it didn't. I didn't sleep well. I was tired the first couple of days because you know you're listening. Mm-hmm. It's like having a an infant that maybe could not that Caesar was sick, but you you're worried. 
Mm-hmm. And it worked out okay because uh, some people called me and asked me if I would help on a proposal. So I <laughs> I felt fine, just a little tired from lack of sleep and, and nervousness. So I worked, helped them work on a proposal, which gave me human interaction and took my mind off of me. Right, and, and worrying about yeah. you know, whether or not you were going to get really yeah. sick. Yeah, is he going to get sick? Basically my... didn't get sick. No, huh? We, it was... It was fine. I'd still walk the neighborhood. You know, you're not walking with the. Um, we both came out fine, and um, it was one more time uh, that bonding experience at home. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, um, I I think we'll kind of wrap up. I wanted to ask you, Janice, um, as a board member uh, with this organization uh-huh. focused on um, urban. Uh, native community mm-hmm. here in town. Um, what? How do you? What needs do you see? Maybe that might need to be addressed. In the future. Uh, yes. But first, I want to commend the organization. They. They did not shut down one time during the pandemic. They adjusted people's hours. They went from four tens. Um, they did everything they could to keep the staff working because. I think what we did not mention in this interview is that people had to take care of their children and still work. So they kept everything going and got shots and got uh, recognition statewide for what they had done. So moving forward in terms of COVID, this is just personal opinion, but I think that the healthcare system needs to not only research, but be prepared to address long-term physiological and psychological impacts of COVID. And the psychological, I don't really know all of everything, but I'm sure there's still people that are frightened. I'm sure some people have uh, emotional trauma from loss of individuals or having been in the hospital because we had a family member who everything was fine until they put that rest, that oxygen on them, and that was bright. That was frightening for us to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, on the physical impacts, speaking of this one family member again, they say they don't always feel good. Uh, mm-hmm. It's in the fatigue mm-hmm. and small, you know, things like that. So mm-hmm. I think that is something that we're going to have to address in the future. And once again, the government needs to assist by providing funding Mm -hmm. and the way COVID hit Indian Indians uh, throughout the United States especially the Navajo people I'm inclined to believe that Indian Health Service will be one of the leaders because they are they are mission driven Mm -hmm. to take care of Indian people and I'm always proud to work with them and interact with them so I think they will be one of the leaders but nobody shares that good news so that's just my thoughts Caesar is there anything else you'd like to add any thoughts you had that you didn't get to spread no I think I pretty well explained everything that we're looking little I, well, I can't say little <laughs> you know in my little lot of time I've had with it, that uh, pandemic hitting it, uh, it's like Janice said, uh, I was, when I give a little talk, I always say it's up to the leaders, mm-hmm. you know, and whoever's in charge mm-hmm. of a, a group or whatever, you know, and, and uh, the, the leaders that we have in charge, not only here, the native people, it's, it's all people, mm-hmm. you know, our government system, you know, the, the people we did that's elected and put into office. If uh, if I was to uh, to believe them, you know, and to go on the basis of being negative about it, you know, maybe I wouldn't be here right now. You know, and so it's uh, I always say that it's up to our leaders to explain and tell us mm-hmm. the truth, mm-hmm. and uh, not not to. Of course, being native, you know the the uh, the untruths that has been yeah. told to our native people, 
all of my life plus you know the, I'm the I'm the third I'm the third generation in the 1800s you know and uh, uh, never knew of any uh, uh, the uh, happenings to our native people until I got I retired and and I become uh, uh, get a position where I had to educate myself to a point where where that uh, it's like with you appreciate you you uh, being here uh, uh, talking to us and uh, and so we can express ourselves to uh, to an audience that uh, our generation is about gone and we have our our young ones that's coming up. And so we try, I try my best to tell them to be involved and to uh, this information that we put out, you know, we're not lying to you. We're, we're, we're telling you exactly what happened in our little lives in this last few years at uh, this pandemic. And that's just the inkling of what has taken place, you know, over all these years of, uh, of uh, Native people coming to this country and, and to uh, uh, this this part of our art where we got removed from. So it's, it's kind of a, a, a learning experience for me at my age where that I say it's always up to the leaders to to let people know and, and tell them the truth, you know, mm -hmm. be truthful about it. Because mm -hmm. truth might hurt, but it, I think it might have saved well, I said over to just a few months ago, you know, this this uh, pandemic, over a million people, mm. you know, maybe half of them could have got, you know, still be here if uh, if uh, at least to somebody that you know don't lie to them, you know, mm -hmm. just tell us the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Anything you'd like to add, Jenna? No, that um, he's right. The number of people we lost could have been prevented, I think. And um, Indian people, like I say, I'm just so proud of our Indian leaders because they did lead, mm -hmm. you know, and that's who I look to to get straight information. And, um, and I want to thank you for taking time to interview us and for this whole project. I hope that it's a benefit to some people and you know as younger generations we this is something I hope they never experience and I hope we've had a little personal touch to possibly what could end up being just one or two sentences in a history book like the Spanish flu <laughs> happened this time and then it went away so I hope this is helping somebody. So thank you for coming to our home. Well, thank you for your good words. It's, uh, it's going to help a lot of people, I think. Appreciate you.